Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel, One Guitar, where we go over basic guitar techniques, theories, music appreciation, and show you my songwriting style, and give you any kind of tips and tricks I can think as a starting beginner guitar player. Last lesson, we went over the parts and pieces of my guitar, where I got my guitar, and how much I paid for it. This lesson, we're going to go over the strings, the picks I use, and some of the supplies I keep in my guitar case, as well as the guitar case itself, and the things I believe you want to keep on you as a guitar player in order to maintain your instrument and do the things you need to do as a guitar player specifically. <clears throat> Let's go check it out. Starting out, we'll start with the main part of the guitar. The biggest section of it, making up the majority of the guitar, is the body of the guitar. The body of the guitar serves several purposes. The sound hole is where the actual sound enters into the guitar, it then reverberates inside of here and bounces acoustically out, giving a pitch at a certain tone. Sound hole, body, bridge. This is the bridge, this entire setup right here. This is where your strings will go into your guitar and lock in place. There's different ways to do that. Electric guitars, sometimes you put them in through the back of the guitar. Acoustics, you'll put them in through the front and have these locking pins on here. You'll actually take those out, remove the old strings, put this end of the string in there that has a locking nut in it, pull it tight, put the pin in there while it's tight, and then lock it in by hammering it down. That's how you hold those strings into the bridge of your guitar. This white ivory looking piece is actually plastic, um, a harder plastic, and that is your bridge saddle. And that bridge saddle, as well as this white plastic piece up here, which is called your nut, serve a specific purpose, and that is to keep your springs, your strings, excuse me, spaced evenly apart from each other along the fretboard, as well as keep the action of your guitar, which is the height of your strings on the fretboard itself, at a certain height. <clears throat> Reason that's important is so you don't get fret rattle and other things. We'll go into that in a later lesson. Bridge, bridge saddle, pins to hold your guitar strings in, body, sound hole. <clears throat> now let's move on up to the neck of the guitar. This is considered the neck of the guitar. This is called the heel on the back side of it. <clears throat> this is your fretboard on the front side of it. The neck is where your fretboard lives and where your strings run along the guitar and where most of the magic is made. That is where the secret of who you are and your personality will come out is on this fretboard right here. These are the actual frets, these little squares. Each one of these squares has a metal bar on the downside of it. When you're playing guitar, you want to play as close to that metal bar as possible within the fret. And that'll give you the cleanest, best tone. <clears throat> these dots on the fretboards are markers that let you know where you are along the fretboard, usually at 3, 5, 7, 12, uh, 15, and 17. Um, and that's usually where they're at. As you play, you'll ignore them more and more, but when you begin, it's really nice if you get lost to kind of just quick reference them and say, oh, where was I? Oh, okay. The first dot, third fret, let's do this really quick. <clears throat> so those are just quick reference points. Then we have our strings traveling all the way up the fretboard itself to the nut into the headstock. Now the headstock contains the name of the guitar as well as your tuning pegs and tuning keys. Different styles, different varieties. This is a Fender. These ones go straight in here and then I wrap them around and lock them with a clove hitch and uh, use these tuning pegs to raise and lower the pitch. Okay, and that's how we tune our guitar, but you have to lock these strings in place first. And I just do a clove hitch and then I do this cute little circle at the end because that's just my style. That's the only reason. Tuning pegs, where your string goes in. Tuning keys, which lower and raise the pitch of the string, okay? Headstock, where all that stuff lives. Some of your headstocks right there will have a truss rod. You can't see, this one doesn't have the truss rod adjustment there, but some of them will have a truss rod adjustment there, and the truss rod puts a bend in your fretboard. You wanna have a certain amount of bend in there, not too much, but a certain amount. <clears throat> Sometimes you'll have these strap connections right here. I have one here, but I don't have one on the neck of my guitar yet because I just don't play this standing up. Um, that is something that sometimes they come with, sometimes you put it on yourself. I play Fender because I've always played Fender for 20 years, uh, 21 years actually. It's just what I like to play. I play Fender guitar through a Fender cable into a Fender amp, and I have a Fender electric also. Um, this guitar only cost me $300. I got it at the pawn shop. And it wasn't really that it was a Fender that it interested me. I picked it up and started trying it out because it was a Fender and I knew that they were good quality guitars. I wasn't too worried about the price. It was within the range that I wanted to pay. The big thing for me is how it sounded when I played it and could it do the things I wanted it to do. And it could. And I'd figured that out 
And so I bought it for $300 from the pawn shop. And so that's my Fender guitar. That is what makes up my Fender acoustic guitar. I'll give you guys the model number. I've never actually even looked at it. It is a CD100LHNAT, manufactured in China even, not American made. Um, and that's the guitar we'll be using for our lessons here on one guitar. So next lesson, I'll be talking to you about my pick and the strings I use and some of the stuff I use to keep this guitar in tip top shape and help me play easier. Bang! This is the guitar pick I like to use when I'm playing guitar. I use this on electric and acoustic. They make light, medium, and heavy picks for guitar. They also make extra heavy for bass. Um, pretty much anything over one millimeter is considered extra heavy, and I wouldn't use that unless you're playing bass. I do, however, use a one millimeter thick Jim Dunlop Black. Um, the reason I like this is because it's a thick pick, so it gives me really good stiff control when I want to play lead but I can also loosen my grip on it to allow it to bend on the strings like it's a light pick. The reason I like using light picks when I'm playing rhythm is they will actually bend a little bit before they get to that stiff point of hitting the note, whereas a stiff pick won't bend at all, so the point where it actually strikes the note is much sooner than a light pick with the same amount of pressure. Um, like right now with this stiff pick, I'm probably halfway to the next string by the time it hits that note and actually plucks it, whereas with a light pick, I'd probably be even closer to that string. So then you hit the next note very close to that first note and blends them in together really nicely. I can do that by just loosening my grip a little bit and letting it flow. That's why I like using a heavy pick. It gives me the most amount of control for everything that I do. Control is very important when you're playing music. You want to be able to get the sounds out of it that you hear in your head. And the way to do that is to be able to control your pick and your instrument. So that's why I use a one millimeter pick. It also has these nifty little dots on the sides of it, both sides, that help you grip onto it, as well as the name is raised up off of it. Um, they're made out of nylon. Light is 0.5, medium is 0.5 to 0.7, heavy is 0.7 to 0.1, or 1 millimeter. <clears throat> they usually come in packs of about 10 for about $5.99. Um, Sometimes I have a pick carrying case. I'll show you that in my guitar case here in a minute where I put them all in together and so that way they're all in one spot. But uh, yeah, there's really not much to it. I'll show you how I hold it. I take my non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm right-hand dominant. My non-dominant is my left hand. Take my hand like this, like I'm trying to hitchhike, my dominant hand. Take the pick, put it perpendicular to my thumb so my thumb's over the name and over those grip dots. I take my front finger like I'm pulling the trigger on a gun and get it into the pulled trigger position. Then I just raise that pulled trigger position up so that this first knuckle is tucked underneath the guitar pick. That is how I hold my guitar pick. This allows me to do various different methods like hybrid picking, pinch harmonics because this finger is really close to the tip of the pick so I can do a pinch harmonic very easy. If I want to get it closer I just tuck it up a little bit more like that. Um, and that is the grip I use for that. It'll feel very awkward for a very long time very first time I was showed how to hold a pick, my guitar teacher said, go ahead and hit a string. Well, I did, and my pick flew across the room. Ah, so don't get frustrated. It'll be a long time before that feels natural. Nowadays, after 21 years of playing, it's the most natural position for my hand to be in. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you a trick really quick for what happens if you get your pick stuck in your guitar. Something that happens all the time, especially when you're first learning how to play. The best way, I think, to do that is just simply do this. Now, it's unbelievable how quick I came out of it. That's actually the quickest I've ever gotten it out of there like that. Even if it takes you a minute or two or five minutes of shaking the guitar up and down and you want big, wide shakes, you don't want to go like that, you want that to bounce inside of there until it comes out of the sound hole, it's still going to be much quicker and much easier than unstringing the guitar or even unstringing three strings so you can reach in there and grab it. Just shake it upside down. Who cares what anybody thinks? It'll pop right out and you're good to go. That's your tip and trick for getting your pick out of your guitar. Now, let's walk over to the guitar case and see what I keep in my guitar case on a day-to-day -day basis. What's in the case? Well, stay tuned next time to find out. This is Lucky with One Guitar. We'll see you on the next episode. We'll go over everything that's inside of this, okay? If you liked what you saw in this video, shoot us a like. If you want to see more, give us a subscribe. Thanks for watching. One guitar. We'll see you next time.